Good day, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to be discussing the reverse flow of fan filter units, specifically for isolation room applications. So let's just jump right into it. So the agenda for today is first we'll go through the relevance of the solution, some appropriate COVID terminology, some COVID frequently asked questions, and applications and product overview for the reverse flow fan filter unit. And then we'll touch on some <coughs> ASHRAE standards that should be considered when using these products. So the relevance of the solution, we are painfully aware that we are dealing with a pandemic right now. Um, this unit has particular applications for this control of this pandemic because it helps with extract and contain contaminants as well as reduce transmission of the disease and more, most importantly, protect frontline workers. So some quick terminology that we need to touch on are just the uh, definition of acute versus non-acute. So for today's presentation, we're focusing on patients who have been diagnosed as acute COVID positive patients. And the reason that the term acute is key is because acute patients are typically put into negative pressure environments. And that's exactly what the reverse flow fan filter unit can help create. So a, a non-acute patient is uh, somebody who's assumed to be COVID positive, but they're still pending their test results. And typically they're gonna be housed in an isolation space that doesn't necessarily have to have negative pressure, it's recommended, but literally ASHRA, um, ASHI and the CDC says, for non-acute patients, you can simply house them in a room and keep the door closed. So some quick frequently asked questions before we jump into the uh, product information. Can the COVID-19 virus become airborne? And uh, the answer is yes. If you have a COVID acute patient in a space for a particular amount of time, they will aerosolize, the virus will become airborne the longer they are in that space. So if somebody comes into that room, they will be subjected to the COVID virus floating around in the air. What benefit does negative pressure offer for housing COVID-19 positive patients? Negative pressure rooms will help mitigate the transmission of the aerosolized virus to other spaces by assuring the flow of air from clean to less clean spaces in the facility, helping to protect healthcare providers. So essentially this reverse flow fan filter unit creates a suction, creating a negative pressure, so it's drawing in all the contaminants in that space, forcing it to pass through the unit and pass over HEPA filter where the air will be scrubbed. Should negative pressure be used in spaces that require positive pressure relationships, specifically such as operating rooms or procedure rooms, et cetera, when a COVID-19 patient needs to be treated in such spaces? And the answer is no. This should be addressed the same way that uh, ASHRAE provides guidelines for handling tuberculosis patients in the operating room. What is the best way to create negative pressure in a patient room? Uh, this is kind of dependent on the current layout design of the patient room and a ventilation system serving the patient room. But some general key concepts that should be honed in on are the room should be a single patient room, ideally with a dedicated bathroom so that person can stay in that room even if they need to use the restroom. The return air grill within the patient room should be sealed off from the ventilation system. So if you utilize a negative pressure, you don't want to pull any excess air from that ventilation duct. The door to the patient room should be maintained closed as much as possible. This is just common sense. Negative pressure should be verified prior to placing the room in service and should be monitored and maintained while the room is in service. Limit transport and movement of the patient outside of the room to medically essential purposes. Patients should be housed in the same room for the duration of their stay. Whenever possible, perform procedures and or tests in the patient's room, and terminal cleaning should be performed after a sufficient number of air changes has removed potentially infectious particles. Are there requirements that must be met for a negative pressure room? Um, the general answer is no. Uh, there's not a whole lot of negative pressure patient rooms in healthcare spaces. So there are no real established requirements. Uh, the ultimate goal is to achieve and maintain a negative pressure relationship to adjoining spaces to be able to move the air from clean to less clean. So it's going to be somewhat dependent on the pressure going on in the other spaces surrounding that room. But if you have a 0.01 negative pressure differential, 
between the isolation room and the adjoining spaces, then technically that is a negative pressure environment. Appropriate applications for use of the reverse flow fan filter unit include negative pressure rooms, emergency rooms, waiting rooms, intensive care units. Other applications could include clinics, urgent care centers, physician offices, homeless shelters, correctional facilities, temporary isolation rooms, and alternative care facilities. An alternative care facility is a converted arena and our hotel for patient isolation. And that is actually occurring across the country with the help of the Army Corps of Engineer. Uh, states are submitting facilities that they are willing to convert to alternative care facilities and working with the Army Corps of Engineers to come up with an appropriate layout for those spaces. Those would be utilized in case the capacity of the hospital is reached and you need spillover. So now let's discuss the specific application of these units. So we'll talk about the ceiling mounted unit first. And here you can see a rendered image of a patient and we're gonna deem this a patient isolation room. Um, you can see that the two by two unit is placed in the ceiling. The two by unit, it will be utilized specifically near the head area to capture any aerosolized particles coming off of the patient. So you see the red arrows indicate the discharge from the patient being sucked up into the unit and then passed down the exhaust from the unit. Later in the presentation, we'll discuss some options for handling the exhaust from these units, but in this image, it's left open-ended. You're not really going to terminate the duct in the ceiling like that. So we'll get into more specifics of where that exhaust duct needs to go later in the presentation. We have a two by two unit and a four by two unit available for ceiling applications. Primarily, these are probably gonna be sought for uh, if you're doing new construction. I mean, you could utilize this for a retrofit, but when dealing with a retrofit, we find that our mobile unit, which you can see here in this image, is actually probably more ideal uh, because of its versatility. The mobile unit, since it is mobile, you could actually store it when it's not being used, and then as excess demand occurs, and you need to convert a space to a negative pressure, this mobile unit could be rolled into the room, turned on, create the negative pressure, and that room could serve as a uh, patient isolation room. So for the mobile unit, you want to place that near the head of the patient, similar to the ceiling mounted unit, but somewhat out of the way that doctors and nurses can still easily access the patient's bedside. The mobile unit does have uh, same capabilities as the two by two and two by four. It's just uh, pulling in air through the face and it has a discharge duct that connects to the back of the mobile unit and that discharge air is passed up through the duct to the appropriate discharge location, which we'll discuss later in the presentation. So here we can see a close-up view of the mobile unit. And the, both the mobile unit and the ceiling unit, they do have uh, room side replaceable filters and the controls are also accessible from the room side. Some of the features of the unit, standard features include ceiling and mobile units. Uh, the construction is 304 stainless steel. The perforated face on the front of the units is a 51% free area perforated face. They have relatively quiet performance for the amount of air that they handle. Uh, the pre-filter is mounted directly behind the per face. Typically on a fan filter unit, the pre-filter would be uh, at the top of the unit before the motor. Um, but essentially this is operating in reverse, so you have to flip the pre-filter to the face right behind the 51% perf. And so that is uh, set up the same way for the ceiling mounted unit and the mobile unit. It includes a standard HEPA filter, which is 99.99% .99 efficient at handling uh, 0.3 microns and larger. And, and it also has an energy efficient ECM motor with high output. It includes a round duct connection for handling the exhaust and is available with a satin polished finish. Some additional options include constant filter monitoring, a filter pressure light that's visible from the room side. Filter pressure light would give you an indication of when the filter has reached its max static pressure drop, which is about one inch and needs to be changed. You can also include challenge and pressure ports and an optional OPA filter is available upon request. 
and an antimicrobial white finish is also available. Some differences between the units. Uh, the ceiling unit is available in two sizes, two by two and two by four, and has uh, available motor voltages including 120, 208, 240, or 277. The mobile unit is a little bit more limited. It has one size, four by two, and has one motor voltage, 120 volts, since that's most compatible with buildings. It includes four casters, two of them have locking brakes, and a 10 foot hospital grade power cord. So you would roll the mobile unit into a room, plug it directly into the wall, and you're ready to go. Air changes. Now per ASHRAE standard 170, 12 air changes per hour is, re is recommended for a patient isolation room. That would equate to about 260 CFM for a 12 foot by 12 foot room with a nine foot ceiling. Um, this will actually determine how quickly the room can be ready for a new patient. And if we look over to the chart to the right, this chart was obtained from the uh, recommendations from the Center for Disease Control, CDC. And you can see if you move your finger down the air change to 12, which has a plus mark because that is a recommended uh, air change rate for an isolation room, that it takes approximately, approximately between 23 to 35 minutes for that room to be completely scrubbed through air changes. So after 23 to 35 minutes, the room is deemed suitable for a new patient. Now exhausting, this is a, a, a key question that comes up with these units because we have um, unclean air passing over the HEPA filter and then so people wanna know where do I exhaust this air? And uh, according to ASHRAE 170, uh, AII's airborne infection isolation rooms that are retrofitted from standard patient rooms from which it is impractical to exhaust directly outdoors may be provided with recirculated air from the room's exhaust on the condition that the air first passes through the HEPA filters. So what this is saying is that even if you don't exhaust this air out of the room, ASHRAE has deemed this air clean. Now in practicality in the real world, most people are wanting to exhaust this air out of the room uh, because first of all, healthcare workers aren't necessarily on board with, oh, this air is all clean and good, it's passed through the HEPA filter. Um, so we do commonly find that people are ducting these units to provide that exhaust to a desired discharge location. So where is that location? Well, it kind of depends, but at the end of the day, that location is outdoors. So all exhaust air from the airborne infection isolation rooms, associated anterior rooms, and associated toilet rooms shall be discharged directly to the outdoors without mixing with exhaust air from any other non-AII room or exhaust system. So let's go through some examples of how to handle that exhaust. And these are actually uh, taken from uh, the American Society of Healthcare Engineers, ASHI, as recommendations of how to handle exhaust air from a negative pressure unit. So here we have an example of exhausting directly into the corridor, a hallway. So in this example, they've actually, airflow is directed out of the room. The return air duct is sealed and the room exit is connected to a sealed vestibule, a three-sided sealed enclosure covering up the actual door of the room. And so you can see this HEPA unit is our reverse flow fan filter unit, the RFCRFF-E. So you can see that the reverse flow unit is pulling in airflow from the patient room and pulls in airflow from the hallway creating a negative pressure environment and then discharging it into the hallway. Now when you discharge into the hallway, uh, pressure can become a concern, so that hallway still needs to be ventilated to the outdoors or else you're gonna have an excessive buildup of pressure into the space. And so one of the questions that I've been asked is, do we necessarily need to build this three-sided vestibule that seems like overkill? And the answer is no, not necessarily you can do something as simple as running a return duct up through the ceiling and dropping it down into the hallway. It could be something like that. But in this example, they've kind of taken it to the next level and created a dedicated vestibule to create that sealed enclosure. But again, we're just ventilating that, that air after it's been cleaned through the HEPA filter into the corridor hallway space and then eventually that corridor hallway will lead to an outdoor ventilation. 
What about exhausting directly to the outdoors? Now, a lot of hospitals don't have operable windows that you can open. Uh, so this can be problematic, but in talking to engineers, they have no problem if they're creating an isolation room with removing a window panel. So just because the windows don't open, that doesn't mean somebody's not willing to remove it to make this happen. So you can see in this example to the right, they removed the glazing and replaced enclosure with a sealed structure that provides uh, an opening for the exhaust duct to ventilate directly outside. So this is just going straight to the outdoors. Again, the return air is sealed off because this is pulling negative pressure, so you don't want to pull any too much um, air through the return duct itself due to the negative pressure in the space. Glazing is removed and enclosure replaced to external opening to which HEPA filter unit is ducted. So here, our exhaust duct is connected to this open window that has an enclosure that's just allowing for the duct to penetrate to the outside space. You could also exhaust directly through the existing return structure in the room. Uh, so here you can see the reverse flow HEPA unit is ducting directly up into this return structure. And again, you wanna seal around the duct. So we're not just placing our duct up to the return grill. You wanna seal around the duct so it's a nice tight connection to, that the duct is just penetrating and providing an ex exhaust air up into that structure. So this again is pulling airflow into the room. This is a typical door diagram, but of course the door will be closed. Uh, the HEPA filter unit is ducted directly to the return and the return duct is sealed. So networking de these devices is definitely an option. You can daisy chain the units utilizing CAT, CAT5 or CAT6 cables. Um, you could connect that eventually to a wall panel such as the ACC 1-25. The ACC 1-25 panel can be wall mounted and can control up to 25 units via daisy chain. You can integrate the units directly to your building management system if you want a little bit more remote control. Uh, the native language is Modbus for these units, but we have gateways available to convert from Modbus to BACnet IP or Modbus to BACnet MSTP. Here's the performance charts for these units. Uh, this information is also readily available on our website. We are listing out the various sizes for the modules for the um, mobile unit and for the ceiling mounted unit. You'll see that the 40% and 50% pulse width modulation set points are highlighted. These are the optimal design set points. These are what we recommend that you target when you initially turn on the unit. And the reason that you don't want to crank the set point too high is that as the filter becomes loaded, the pressure drop will increase and the motor RPM will increase to overcome that pressure drop. So you wanna make sure you leave enough headroom for that motor to ramp up as that filter becomes more accumulated. Maintenance of the unit. Uh, I mentioned the pre-filter and HEPA filter are replaceable directly through the face. The pre-filter is directly behind the 51% perf, so it's directly accessible as after you remove the perf face. And then just inside the unit, you'll see the HEPA filter. The unit is made out of 304 stainless steel, so is readily available for disinfecting through any means necessary uh, according to the facility routine guidelines. So one of the questions that comes up on occasion is that the size of the COVID virus itself. Um, the HEPA filters are rated for efficiency based on 0.3 microns to uh, 1.0 microns, but the COVID virus is actually sized at 0.2 microns. So the question has come up with, is a HEPA filter appropriate for capturing the COVID virus since it's smaller than it's the actual filters rated efficiency? And the answer is yes. And the reason is it's due to Brownian motion. And this diagram right here kind of illustrates Brownian motion. <clears throat> Basically, it's a random motion of particles suspended in a fluid such as air. Particles small, smaller than 0.3 microns are subjected to Brownian motion, which causes them to flow in this zigzag pattern on the diagram. 
Even though the particles could fit through the fibers of the filter, the particles motion and size causes them to come in direct contact with the fibers and are captured by the filter media due to diffusion. Since particles that are 0.3 microns and larger are not impacted by Brownian motion, HEPA filters are tested at 0.3 micron size, which is actually the most difficult particle size to ca capture. Therefore, even though COVID is smaller than the tested micron size, HEPA filters are even more efficient at capturing particles of this size than particles at 0.3 microns. So in regard to supplier distribution, um, ASHRAE 170 does recommend that we need to supply two air changes per hour of fresh outdoor air. So if you need a supply diffuser, we recommend using a non-aspirating diffuser, a laminar diffuser to supply that air, and to place that diffuser around the foot area of the bed as designated by this dash blue line. So an appropriate device that would do that would be the 5000 or the 5100 series laminar flow diffusers. So converting spaces. Um, this is what I mentioned that the Army Corps of Engineers is hard at work on across the nation, <clears throat> converting non-healthcare spaces into healthcare spaces. So the same concept as the patient isolation rooms that we've been discussing still applies. You need to provide negative pressure in an enclosed space. So one of the easiest ways to do that is uh, by converting a hotel to a healthcare, which we call H2HC. So hotels are very similar to hospitals in that they have small enclosed rooms that could be utilized to create a negative pressure space. So if a hospital is at capacity, a, a hotel can be converted to an alternative healthcare site after appropriate steps are taken. And these appropriate steps that I mentioned are defined by the Army Corps of Engineers. They've laid out guidelines of how to convert these spaces to be appropriate for healthcare. So same thing would apply in a hotel that we were just discussing the patient room. You could use a reverse flow fan filter unit to create a negative pressure environment. And then you could duct that air directly outside through a window, through a return duct, or even through a hallway, which is later ducted to the outside. Arenas are another space that are being converted to healthcare sites. Um, arenas are a little bit more open-ended, as you know, they're very large vacuumous spaces. So for that space to be appropriate to house isolation patients, they actually have to construct small enclosed rooms or pods. So again, uh, they're just creating uh, patient isolation rooms within a very large open space. And these pods would typically house one to two patients and be serviced with a, a negative uh, pressure. And that air would be ventilated appropriately to an out, outside space. Uh, one question that somebody has asked is, based on, the, on your unit, how far can you stretch that exhaust duct before static pressure becomes an issue? And we estimated that you could go about 100 feet with a flex duct before the static pressure becomes too great for that motor to overcome. So with these units, as with everything else, we are open to special requests. So for example, if you need LED lights included in the face or need a side duct access, we can provide those options. Uh, the key is that if you have special requirements, just reach out to us and we'd love to discuss any of the details that you're working on. If you need um, lead times, uh, the lead times for these units is standard six weeks. We are prioritizing COVID orders to four weeks. If you need a shorter lead time, we may not be able to provide it, but please reach out to us and ask because it's all dependent on the current capacity of the plant at that moment. More information on the RFCRFF dash E is available on the Kruger website. So we encourage you to take a visit over there, look at the catalog data. There's a wonderful promotional brochure that Lily has put together, and as well as a frequently asked question document that could be handy for you to share with any of your customers. Additional resources available through the Army Corps of Engineers, <clears throat> American Society of uh, Mechanical Engineers, and ASHI, the Society for Healthcare Engineering, ASHRAE, and of course the CDC. Okay, at this time, I think we're going to open it up to questions.